These are the notes for the Scientific Revolution. This is a very short notes packet. It's only like one page um, because we're going to, after this, do our scientist matrix where we walk around the room and discover all different things about scientists. So the first question is, what is the Scientific Revolution? Well, the Scientific Revolution is a change in European thought that replaced the old ideas and assumptions about the natural world. The big key part is going to be focusing on the natural world. So we're questioning the natural world, the earth and the planet and the universe, things like that. They're going to base all of this upon careful observations and a willingness to question accepted beliefs because we had been questioning things since the start of the Renaissance. And so we're just kind of continuing that strain. So how did we get to the scientific revolution? Well, in the Renaissance, we had humanism. We had a growth of curiosity or the development of humanism. We started to challenge some old ideas and we started to see a lot of individuality forming. In the Protestant Reformation, we're going to be challenging old ideas about the church. In exploration, we're going to be discovering new lands, which means there's a whole other side of the planet we didn't know about. And if there's a whole other side of the planet we didn't know about, is there a whole other part of the universe that we don't know about? And then in the scientific revolution, we're further challenging old ideas about the natural world. So all of these things are building up to get to the scientific revolution, but you have to remember that it's all kind of happening at the same time. All three of these units that we've covered are all happening at the same time. So when exactly was this happening? Well, it's happening in the 1530s to approximately 1790s. Okay, it would be a good idea to kind of draw this timeline out. It's not perfect timeline, it's a chronological order of things. Um, but you can see how Gutenberg's printing press um, and the Renaissance are starting, and Columbus is happening around the same time as Copernicus. Okay, um, And then we have Martin Luther added in, happens before Galileo, before Shakespeare. Okay, So all of these different units, Shakespeare's from the Renaissance, Martin Luther's from the Protestant Reformation, all of these units are happening at the same time. So take a minute to pause the video and copy this down and then come back. Okay, so after this, then we moved around the room looking at the different scientists and we kind of gave out some scientist awards. Um, and we also looked at the three theories of the solar system. So you have the old version of Ptolemy from the ancient world where the earth is in the center and all of the planets, including the sun, go around the earth. And he thought that based on observation, um, how when you drop something, it always goes straight down to the earth because of gravity. And so he figured if this gravity force, he didn't obviously call it gravity, that's from Newton, but if this force pulls the object down towards the earth, then wouldn't that control the planets as well? Because they move through the sky, and so obviously aren't they moving around the earth? Okay, and then second, we had Copernicus with the sun in the center and then the planets moving around, but they're moving in perfect circles. And his data, his theory, is going to be backed up by the data of Galileo and Tycho Brahe. And Kepler is going to take that those mountains of data and use math to look at the data and figure out that the planets are moving around the sun, true to the heliocentric idea, but... Um, they're not moving in perfect circles, they're moving in ellipses, or what we call oil, uh, ovals. So you need to know that word ellipses. Okay, so that's it. That's the notes for Scientific Revolution.